Uh, I would like to increase your appreciation for what karaoke is, what it can be, um, and how it will benefit the rest of your life to engage in. I, I consider it kind of a sport. I'm, I'm not super into the sports ball. I like to watch a little soccer, football here and there, but I don't you know, get into the teams. But I do go hard at karaoke. I, I love it. Uh, it's a community building sport. Uh, in a way. Now, one of the things that I love about karaoke is uh, it really, really, really builds confidence. Now, in my estimation, there's two main kinds of confidence. There's um, uh, selective confidence, say special confidence, and then there's general confidence. Okay. Um, now, special confidence, uh, the best example I could think of is is let's say you're a nerd and you're not attractive and you're in bad shape and you live in your mom's basement and you play Halo 2 all the time. You can't leave your apartment. I mean, when you do, you put on a whole lot of layers. Any sort of interactions you're making with people throughout the day is very like, hello, uh, ni nice, you know, just very transactional. Like, here's the money. Give me the um, uh, Mountain Dew, um, you know, just very, very awkward. The idea of like seeing somebody of, of uh, you know, that you're attracted to and, you know, trying to go on a date with them or something like that is completely off the table. Um, you know, the idea of like uh, applying for your dream job and just being like, hey, my name's so and so. I, I really love X, Y, Z and I have these skills and I would love to come work for you. Are there any opportunity, you know, anything along those lines, like not a chance. Um, but when it comes to sitting down in front of their computer and they boot up and they jump into Halo 2, I don't know why I'm picking on Halo 2. Um, they're, you know, the, the shoulders drop back, the breathing is deep and confident, the mind becomes quiet, and they're just this Halo killing machine, right? Um, so that they have specialized confidence, right? Because when they're in the context of that game, uh, they, they have extreme confidence and they, you know, they feel like a big shot and they know all the right decisions. They know the right timing, blah, 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 blah. Um, that doesn't really carry over into anything else, does it? Um, now if you're super good looking and, and, and let's say you're, um, uh, you know, you're a, a male model or something, then, um, you know, that it, just having people react to you a certain way more often than not is generally just going to, uh, you know, raise the level of your confidence, um, to it's going to kind of carry over into different other contexts, right? Like if, if you're a supermodel now, th this gets tricky because it can, can flip, right? You get the pimple and you freak out and you overreact and you think your career's over and you get in a spiral, but let, let that alone for a second. You know, you, you, people celebrate how, you know, Good. You look in a magazine and then people want to date you. And then, you know, there's you're getting more attention and then kind of you get this halo effect. And, you know, you might even get some job that you're not actually qualified for, but there just appears to be this kind of halo around you. Right. Um, and then you can find yourself in a virtuous cycle. Um, now, there's a lot of things that people think is going to give them core confidence, making lots of money people think is going to give them core confidence. Maybe you've said to yourself sometime like, oh, if I if I make six finger figures, then I'm going to start living confidence, seven figures, and I'll, then I'm going to start living life on my terms. And, you know, I, I, I won't be shy about, you know, expressing, a, 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 you know, a, a desire to go out with somebody who I think is really special. Um, I, I'll go and, uh, you know, I'll, I'm going to make a ton of friends. I'm going to travel the world, you know, and how uh, you, you hit that metric, or maybe you have a friend like this who hits this metric and like nothing changes, like the numbers on their screen go up, but it doesn't actually move the needle of how happy they are, how confident they are, how much they're living life on their terms. Okay. Now let's compare that with something as stupid as becoming a karaoke god. Um, it's not even close. The confidence that you can build knowing that you could walk into any country on the planet, into almost any bar, onto almost any night that they're doing karaoke, get on stage, 
do a couple of stuff that we're going to show you here, crush it, make 10 friends, you know, go on a, a wild gallivant of, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, rom romantic fairy tale uh, adventures um, th that that is possible and that that will happen to you. Like if you are this good at this stupid, stupid little thing of doing karaoke well, you will build a type of core confidence that will bleed into everything you ever do. I swear, I swear to swear to God. Um, so we're going to get into that a little bit um, beyond just singing technique. Although I would like to give you one little singing technique just just to kind of start to build this core confidence of doing karaoke. Does this make sense? Like. As stupid as it is, I mean, you know, public speaking is one of these things. Like if you get really good at public speaking, that's going to create a level of core confidence that's just going to permeate through everything you do in your life. OK, um, you know, uh, look at like a boss, right? A CEO of the company. And when he's in his company, he's like doing this, that and the other. You take that CEO and you put him in, you know, a nightclub with 20 somethings and he's in this, you know, million dollar suit with the expensive watch. You know, there's some like drunk kid who's like high fiving, like like that guy's going to have a better time and, you know, get better results or what. The point is, it's like having 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 confidence and status in a given situation. If you take that person and you put them into a foreign situation that that that's that specialized confidence does not carry over the confidence that you build just doing karaoke you, you take with you everywhere to the top of Mount Olympus, to the, you know, the middle of a jail cell, to, uh, you know, a, a bar in Zimbabwe, whatever it is. Like if you build this skill, it never leaves you and it, it, it permeates literally everything else you do. So that's I just wanted to get into that really quickly about the value of getting good at karaoke, as stupid as that sounds. Uh, another thing is this is such a great way to move on to like joining a band. This was my path. I just started out being really into karaoke. I I was in a a, a bar in, in, in Park Slope with some friends and I saw this guy get up and just crush shook me all night long. Just this normal looking dude who, you know, probably was like a real estate agent. Just crush shook me all night long. I was just like. I have to do that. I have to do that. And, you know, here I am talking to you guys like 10, 12, 15 years later. I don't know. But I was I was just blown away that a normal person could do that and then just waltz back to their normal life. Um, so anyway, uh, I'd like to get into one little voice technique to get you started. Um, lip trills, tongue trills. This is just the best exercise to start out becoming better at singing uh, because it works on your airflow. It works on your breath support. <clears throat> Excuse me. It works on your blending of head voice and chest voice. And uh, so you just kind of do uh, one, five, you know, half octave things and you just start out, you go. And this may this is probably going to be kind of difficult. You just kind of move up and down, move up and down. Don't don't push it too hard. Work your way down gradually. Um, this is such a great exercise because you're getting airflow feedback. You are learning to not find pitch with airflow. Um, anyway, I don't even want to get into why it's good, but just just start doing doing lip trills <clears throat> as you work on your favorite songs. Um, song selection. Very, very important. You know, people are always like, what's your go-to? That's like, you know, when people ask, what's what's your go-to karaoke song? I'm like, I, what is, uh, you know, what is Einstein's go-to math equation? That's crazy, you know. Um, but it, it probably, you know, if you're, if you're on a date, you don't want to say something as ridiculous as that. Um, but, you know, so uh, song selection is great. You, you definitely want to, like, get a sense of the crowd. Uh, and see what they're, you know, what's going over well, <clears throat> how old they are, what their, what their era is, what their decade is. Other considerations of song selection. Has it been done to death? Uh, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, 
it's just been done to death. If you've got kind of an interesting thing you're going to do with it, if you're going to incorporate other people, it could be really cool. But to just go up and do Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, you know, it's been done to death. You'll notice that songs have like a wave to them, right? So like um, I was working in a karaoke bar in Los Angeles and uh, the the movie, um, what's that movie um, with um, Lady Gaga had just come out. Uh, hang on, sorry. Google, I'm mid-record. I, 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 it's going to be like 15 minutes. Wow. You can eat without me. Wow. Uh, what was that movie? Uh, Lady Gaga. Tell me something, boy. And so that was just like during that time. If you went up, you'd have the audience's full attention. Everybody was super into it. They loved it. Um, uh, but then, you know, probably I don't know, three, four, or six months later, you do that, you'd lose the crowd. It's just like, oh, uh, the sha la 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 la. All right, I'm done with it. Um, so that's one thing you want to pay attention to. You know what? What's what's going to go over well? Now, what you can also do is just impose your will like a loaf of bread in their freaking ear, right? Um, do this at your own risk. You know, it can be really fun though. It's part of the beauty of karaoke. Is it's like you hear five ballads in a row, and then you know somebody does, uh, you know, um, I don't know something very very different from that. Um, so you want to pay attention to that stuff. Uh, I highly recommend you do things with uh, at least some level of synthesizer in it because synth sounds are going to sound the best. Um, now, with the, the karaoke tracks, the way they put them together, it's often not consistent. Uh, for the KJ, the karaoke jockey, uh, they're like behind the bar, right? And they're, um, they're looking at... Um, you know, the, you, you know, they put in the song, they're going to see like eight different versions of that same song made by different karaoke MIDI, uh, uh, you know, synthesizer companies. Some of them are going to be quite good. Some of them are going to be trash. A lot will be like in the middle. But one thing that's pretty consistent is uh, the one instrument that like kind of like fake, you know, MIDI musical instrument, digital interface uh synthesizers can't really imitate they can imitate drums they can imitate bass they can imitate keyboard of course because you're playing a keyboard they can imitate organs chimes uh even like uh you know violin strings as long as it's you know that tech, tech is pretty advanced the one thing they can't really imitate is electric guitar now, if a song is like a very kind of like super guitar driven song and there's not like one kind of like organ sound or or, uh, you know, some something else, not guitar to uh, kind of fill out the mid range. There's a very, very, very good chance that that song is just not going to sound good. Um, so you can sing your little heart out. But, you know, if the MIDI track sucks then it's it's just going to be kind of unsatisfying for you and, and for the audience. Um, so that's one thing to think about in song selection. So, for example, I love Queen. A great song is Radio Gaga uh, to really get the crowd going. Uh, it's in my range. Um, range is kind of a myth, but we'll get into that. As a beginner, range is very, very real. And just think of it in terms of, you know, can you hit the top note? Can you hit the bottom note? Um and uh, also, it's got a lot of synth in it. It's got a lot of synthesized. And uh, bring, 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 all of that stuff. Um, and so that's going to sound good on the MIDI. Uh, it's not super electric guitar driven. Uh, you know, like tie your mother down. If if the MIDI guy does a really good job with it, it might might sound great. But uh, you know, that would be one that I would kind of steer away from. Unless you kind of know your karaoke joint and, you know, the quality of those songs, if they if the songs that they're playing of that variety sound good. God knows I love ACDC. Most of the time, it's not going to sound that good coming out of there. The, the guitars are just not going to sound like full bodied, well produced electric guitars. Just one of those things. Um, talking about range, this brings me to a great thing when you're going to sing at a karaoke spot if you are not a professional singer um 
there's something called transposing and every single karaoke jockey in basically in the world, definitely like in America knows how to transpose. You should absolutely take advantage of this. What is transposing? Uh, it's taking the key of a song down. So you know how there's 12 notes and the way you hear music is basically uh, there's like a root note and then everything else is in the context of that root note. And so when you transpose, you just move everything down. Essentially, you're making songs easier to sing. Uh, so you go up to the karaoke guy and you just say, hey, could you uh, could you uh, transpose me down two half steps or two steps? And so he's going to go in his thing. He's just going to go beep, bop, boop. And so instead of singing, who wants to live forever? Right. He goes, who, who, who wants to live forever? It's just that little bit easier. So if your voice isn't trained to be able to belt out like an A440, you know, nine times out of 10, just just have him take it down three, three half steps. And then, you know, you're going to be kind of, you know, singing in like uh, what's there's that phrase NARP, a non-athletic regular person. If you're uh, a, a NARS, right, a, <laughs> a non-athletic regular singer. Um, then now suddenly you can belt in the quality and the vo voice and the style of the way this professional singer is hitting that song. Uh, you know, a couple of people in the audience may be like, that didn't sound right to me. But everybody else is just going to be like, wow, it's like a magic trick. This, this person's singing this crazy hard song. How are they doing that? Because they asked the uh, karaoke jockey to transpose. Um, little tip, basically every karaoke jockey uh, they live off of tips. You can just walk up and offer money to jump in the line. They'll all be cool with it. They'll all like you. Um, now, part of the uh, part of the showmanship is why I have this movie up here. If you don't know this movie, it's called The Cable Guy. It's starring Jim Carrey. It's freaking hilarious. Uh, I saw it in the theater, hated it. I saw it again with my friends on a TV. I, I, I laughed so hard, I couldn't believe it. And there's this amazing karaoke scene. And I'm showing this to you right now because as funny as this scene is, Jim Carrey's character hits all the notes for being a good karaoke presenter and uh, winning over the crowd and being a showman and all that stuff. And he does it all in about like a minute and 10 seconds. So I'm just, we're going to go into this and I'm, I'm going to break it down as we go. Hopefully there's no feedback here. So watch and enjoy The Cable Guy. Look at that patronage right off the bat, right off the bat. Jim Carrey is delivering what we call patronage. This is that very kind of like regal aspect that you bring to the table when you go to do karaoke. Um, now, what that is, is uh, just complimenting the last person who sang. Be like, wow, that was that was incredible. Um, you know, if it wasn't there was somebody like you get up and you go. Thank you. Give it up for the karaoke hosts. They're doing such a good job tonight. Okay, I know this stuff sounds cheesy, but it it's around because it just works. It's community building and it's establishing high status that you treat people with respect. They're going to treat you with respect. Uh, it just creates a good time. Everybody loves if you remember their name and you could compliment them and you thank them for doing their job. It makes them feel appreciated. Karaoke jockeys are by and large not crushing it. Uh, you know, financially or whatever. Uh, they're there because they absolutely they're they're there for the love of the game. Uh, I did it because it was it, I I got so much experience singing in front of strangers, um, you know, for free. And it, actually, they were paying me, you know, and then I got fired for singing too many times. <laughs> One of my proudest moments. I want that on my tombstone. OK, so. Ooh, give it up for Raul. He's, he's amazing. He, uh, 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 where'd you get those pipes, guy? Um, patronage. Oh, yeah. Humility. 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 Here we go. Oh, no. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Obviously, you can't do that if you're like going up to sing karaoke. But I will say this. If you are, um, let's say you're single and, and you're some attractive person that you're into um, at, the, at the venue, you must 
I'm I'm a happily married man, so I'm just giving away you know all the tips in the in the in the tip bag. You must go and talk to them and just say hi before you go up and sing. You got to do it. You got to just go up to whoever. Let's say let's say there's like a, a record executive and you're a singer, some some person who has status to you that you want to have uh, some kind of an engagement with. Um, you go up to them before you go up and sing. Got to do it before you go up and sing. Hey, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. What's your what's your go to? Are you going to sing? No. Oh, awesome. Yeah, no, me too. Blah, blah, blah. Um, downplay. If you're really good, you downplay it. If you're not good, you downplay it way more. Never make it like a big deal, even if you know you're you're like me and you you're weirdly it, just infatuated with the the art and the culture and the the science of karaoke. You don't lead on to that at all. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna sing and do my thing, right? And then if you go up in and crush it, it's it's awesome. Just do that. All right. Uh, so again, here you go. Here, here, this is where he does like the nope, not gonna do it, not gonna do it. Um, so yeah, if there's an opportunity to be, um, you know, kind of demure about things, you take it. Song title jokes always go over well. Song title jokes always go over well. If there's a way to throw in the name of the song uh, with a with an anecdote or a different song by the same band or just any song. Always goes over well. Here we go. Now, this is amazing. If you get up, you go up and you thank them, you're going to have a little bit of time. They're going to be playing their other music, getting getting ready. There's probably a musical interlude before you come in and start singing. Um, boom. You might know this song by Jefferson Airplane. Blah, blah, blah. He's providing historical context for the song. You don't have to do this, but I highly recommend you provide some type of context for the song that you're going to sing. It's going to get everyone in the audience really like drawn in, focused on, on the song, not even necessarily on you, but on the song that you're about to sing. Uh, it's magic. Do it. Uh, so he's providing historical context, and then he's going to go in and provide personal context, which that's the real killer there. Okay. <laughs> the night the health angels that held Al Aldermont had their way. Tonight, it's my turn. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so if you have a speech like this that you can give before you sing a song, uh, you know, uh, 1997, uh, uh, Zombie came out and, and uh, protested war. Tonight, I'm protesting the war on us. I just made that up right now, but you know, it was pretty good. I mean, you'll get, you'll get people like, what the hell is this? Like, uh, again, patronage, patronage for the singer, patronage for the band, patronage for the karaoke host, patronage for the bartender, patronage for the last guy who sang. Oh, just keep it going. Keep it going. Uh, it, it's, it's what karaoke is all about. Okay. So uh, as far as his performance, I don't know, maybe there'll be some gems in there, uh, but I just wanted to show you the setup. Oh yeah, here we go. Quick turns, oh, I can't get enough of it. So some cool karaoke moves that are good. Y you can't spin too much, right? If you're singing a song, and I, I know I'm like this, but like if you're, if you're singing your song and you do one of these, you jump your feet over and you turn around, like it just, it's very engaging. People, people love it. Uh, that one's a little bit involved, not really. Uh, but another one that I love that's really great is right before you sing another verse, you roll your, you kind of take, do a little jump and you roll your shoulders in on the mic. So it's, again, I'm sitting, but you know, one little karaoke move like that. And then you start singing. So, uh, every night and night on in the street, babe, marching child and night on in the street, babe. You know, uh, just, 
breaking up the verse a little bit by these kind of like quick little movements, um, getting people in the audience to sing along with you. Um, this is, uh, you know, for, for me and ACDC, uh, I, I, I gotta do this a lot. You gotta, if you don't get the audience like singing along with Thunderstruck, you're doing something wrong. One of the best ways to do that, um, besides just like kind of commanding it, demanding it, let me hear you. One of the things you'll see rockers do this all the time is mic out to the audience, eyes closed, looking away, right? Ear like this. People, people respond to that. People really, really respond to when, when the singer has their eyes closed, can't see you. They're not like, oh, validate me, please. You know, but eyes closed, microphone out to the audience, looking away, hand to the ear. Like, who can I hear out? Who's out there? Who's out there? You do one of those, uh, you're going to have massive audience engagement. It, it really just, it just works. Um, again, those little kind of dance moves to be fun. Let's see what other gems, uh, Mr. Jim Carrey has for us. Hip thrusts. I mean, what, what, yeah, obviously. Take it to the ground. Always. You know, this this one, I might, you know, you might lose some of the more bashful in the crowd. I mean, uh, you know, you'll, you'll always get a big reaction. You don't want to be too much of a clown. I mean, I, I don't care. But, you know, most normal people, you know, if you're wearing white pants, you don't want to be walking around with, like, you know, stuff on your knees all night, of course. Uh, but if you're comfortable with it and it's a little bit justified, people go nuts if you just kind of, like, Wah! get on the ground, do your thing. Good times. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, just genius, right? Just absolute Jim Carrey at his, at his absolute best. I love to see it. Um, you know, with your free hand, you should be uh, creating the imagery of the song, right? I mean, he's being ridiculous, but he's evoking the psychedelic 60s with his hand because the song's from the 60s, you know, um, in the 90s doing like, uh, I just keep thinking of uh, uh uh, the four non blonde song, you know, I said, Hey, what's going on? You know, why not just smoke an imaginary cigarette, look at it, you know, ask the crowd, flick it at somebody, you know, uh, some song about smoking blunts or whatever. You do a hit of the thing and then you can even walk around to the audience. And it, this is the magic of karaoke. You're just like, yeah, you know, um, I'm trying to think of a good, like, um, you know, chronic line, like, uh, Hey, 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 hey. Smoke weed every day. You know, whatever it is. Um, all these fun little games you can play with your hand. Like, there's something about music people's imagination can really take over. You know, if you're driving, you know, being on a surfboard for, um, you know, doing some Beach Boys or whatever. Always goes over great. Again, I understand if you don't want to get too clownish with it. So, you know, calibrate to your own tastes, your own comfort level. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> pointing at the words on the screen as they go by. I mean, come on. <laughs> Oh, I got to steal that. I haven't been to karaoke in too long, but that is so good. <laughs> to need somebody to love. Oh, dude, come on. Uh, 
Oh my god. I mean, yeah, it, like it, sustains are a funny, the fun thing. I mean, if you can hit a long sustain and you know do like there's just. Like whatever it is, that, that that can always be fun because you know it's another just thing people can relate to in the audience is like running out of air, you know, and and really at the end of the day we're all doing karaoke to just feel like a spirit of of togetherness. Um, that you know it's it's hard to get that with and like if your team wins like a freaking Super Bowl or you know you get married, uh, but those things don't happen that often. You know, karaoke happens every single day, you know, at like five different places in your neighborhood. And you can get that same, you know, I think there's a German word for it. That's, uh, that's what I'm, what I'm, what I'm reaching for. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Uh, anytime you're talking over music, everyone, just kind of assumes that you're like, you know, Bobby Darren. Like, it's that easy. You're just, there's music going on. You don't have to sing. You're talking to the crowd. Oh, we got some good looking eyes over here. I mean, what, dude, people are just like, how is he doing this? It's like a, it's like a stand up comedian doing a callback. It's just like, makes a joke about Raisin Bran. And then 45 minutes, he's like, oh, it sounds like Raisin Bran. Everyone's just like, how did he do that? It's like the easiest thing in the world. Um, but again, the, 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 the way an audience responds to it is very, very favorably. Do it. I'm so glad we got into playing this because I, I forgot how good it was. Dude, I mean, if you incorporate this stuff, you're going to be a karaoke god. He did it a little bit there. You saw that big scream? Um, you you want to use the proximity effect so that the EQ of that is pleasant. So you don't do it here because uh, probably it'll just get really compressed and come out really muddy. Uh, you'll see like morons like cupping the mic like that. Like it's you're just you're just making everything worse. If you're going to do a big scream, <laughs> you want to create space and distance. It looks like you know what you're doing, right? When you're just like, <laughs> It just, it's just kind of chaotic. There's, there's a time and a place for that. There's a genre for that, of course. But if you're doing something more, more, more mainstream and you, cause the Michael's pick you up, especially those high frequencies, you get, you got all this space here. People are going to hear it. They're going to see that visually. They're going to be like, oh, this is like a compassionate singer who knows they're, they're being loud and obnoxious and they're making it more pleasant for my ear. I'm more engaged with what they're doing. This this literally happens. So use the proximity effect when you're getting loud. Uh, if you if you can get blackmail on your frenemies you uh, during karaoke, you, you should absolutely do that. I'm just kidding. Don't don't do that. Don't don't blackmail your friends. It's the summer of love, baby. If you can, if you can pull off one of those with conviction, I mean, it, you could turn a Wednesday night into just like a wild, wild time. Um, uh, you know, just just live live in your best life. Um, okay, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, so you you heard some feedback when I was doing this. I think there's some in the show. Quick thing about feedback, you hear that um, by like you know, amateur sound text is like, oh, feedback, feedback. Uh, this is good to know. This is valuable information. Uh, if you're going to be doing karaoke, you want to be uh, aware of the capsule and the speakers. 
And when the capsule gets too close to the speakers, that starts to happen, right? You get feedback. So it's not rocket science. Just make sure this microphone, this capsule, you know, this is kind of an omni, but usually, you know, the, the, it's going to be more of a cone shape uh, for, for, you know, most uh, karaoke microphones that are basically trying to be like a, a watered down SM58 that's uh, able to be dropped because people are idiots. Never drop the microphone. If, you, if, if you're a microphone dropper, just get off my channel. You're disgusting. Uh, if you're not follow me and, and, and comment to me. Um, but yeah, we, we don't, we don't accept microphone droppers. We don't care about politics, religion, any of that, but just no microphone droppers. This is a safe space for microphone droppers at voice head. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I would like to leave you with. I gave you some rock moves. I gave you some, uh, really simple vocal exercise of like lip trills to get your, uh, muscles ready to be flexible. Um, some cool hand moves, gestures that kind of sell the song, uh, a little bit about song selection. Um, when a song repeats itself without getting repetitive, this is a great karaoke song. Um, I actually would suggest to you that the greatest karaoke song ever written, and it's not because I love this song so much, it's just objectively the greatest karaoke song, is It's All Coming Back to Me by Celine Dion. Okay? This song builds in a way that is just magic. Uh, it just gets the crowd going hard. It's similar to Total Eclipse of the Heart. And that it repeats the motifs, the melodies, they repeat, but they don't get repetitive. Um, though it's just magic and it, it just captures the audience's attention and keeps them engaged. It's all coming back to me. It's so camp. Um, and the way the way it just builds is just really, really evocative. You get the people going hard. Uh, you want a song that repeats without getting repetitive. These this is a, a hallmark of the great karaoke songs. Uh, and it's it hasn't been done to death. You know, maybe this video will go viral and it'll be done to death. I would be happy if this video went viral and that song became done to death. But I'm also happy to just know that that's like this sleeper that, I, you know, I can whip out at a right, the right time in like a karaoke party to just really get the people going. Um, now, uh, oh, there was something else. Oh, when a song gets super repetitive, uh, especially like on a chorus outro, this can be dangerous. You don't want to be the guy up there. And like, you, you can feel when like a chorus has gotten stale and you're just repeating it over and over again. Um, <clears throat> That happens with a lot of songs. Uh, the the one that I'm thinking of is Some Might Say by Oasis. You know that some might say. Do, 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 do. You know what some might say. Do, 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 do. You know what some might say. Do, 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 do. You know, it just kind of, it's that song. It repeats so many times. It just kind of gets stale. Um, the great thing about karaoke you can end whenever you want to. You don't have to go to the end of the song. This is actually kind of a boss move. If you sing a song and it's going and then it's just kind of the chorus outro, you hit four of them and then you're just like, thank you, thank you, everybody, good night, whatever. Drop off the mic, tip your bartender, boom. And then, you know, go hang out with your friends. Um, this is like a boss move because people expect to be bored and it's just, what? oh, he's done, he's thanking people? Oh, okay. And you'll just see people start to fall into your frame of like showmanship and, and they'll, you know, act like an appreciative crowd. Um, so this is I highly recommend doing that. All right. I think I've given you a lot of good tips to go and crush your local uh, karaoke joint, as well as a really good justification for why this is such a worthwhile thing to do with your spare time. Um, if you got any questions, any comments, please leave them below and uh Remain, uh, remain a voice head and, uh, you know, our legions are growing. We're in triple digits. Thank you so much to those of you who, who watched and liked and shared, uh, all our shows and we'll just keep growing this and getting it bigger and more fun every time. Thanks.